So welcome everyone to this IFLA webinar that's going to launch the results of the Regional Advocacy Priority Study. This is an exercise we carried out in the middle of last year, so the Northern Hemisphere summer, Southern Hemisphere winter. And the whole idea was to give us a better idea of where our members, where the library field is focused on advocacy, both in terms of the institutions you're trying to support, the type of libraries, sorts of policy areas that you're really focusing on, and the activities that are being carried out. And the idea of this was to give us a much better idea of where you are now so that we can plan, but importantly also that if there's new regional structures, regional division committees can plan. So my name is Stephen Weiber. I'm Director for Policy and Advocacy, and I'm part of a team that works on a number of different advocacy issues around copyright, around sustainable development, around human rights, governance, cultural heritage, cultural diversity, and building skills in general. But what I want to do now is hand over to my colleague, Svina Goasimidu, who is going to talk to us about the results of that study. So over to you, Svina. Thank you very much, Stephen. Nice to see you. I am Despina Yersimidu. I'm a plus strategic development officer. Uh, and currently my main uh, work focus is the new regional division committees uh, and their work across the regions. So as you might know, IFLA has now six different regional divisions, and here is the main web page of, of, of those. As you can see on the left side, uh, there is one for Asia Oceania, one for Europe, uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, Middle East and North Africa, North America and Sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, these actually all have acronyms, which I'm going to use during my presentation, and I'm going to show you this to you in a while. Um, and just to give you a bit of an insight, each of those regional divisions um, has actually already taken up their sleeves and um, they are hard at work developing their action plans. And they will soon come out with their impressive action planning and work, pro work products, uh, which are focused on each region. And this is actually why we did this study that we're presenting to you today. So we initially began this to help the new regional division committees get an idea of where current advocacy efforts um, focus around the world. Um, so both on a global and on a regional level. Uh, and so to help the new regional division committees uh, start conversations. Another aim of the study uh, is to inspire actions that respond to the field's regional advocacy needs. Um, so this actually, the study has actually informed the development of the action plans for each uh, regional division committee that I referred to earlier. Um, and also just to say that this action plans will soon be published on AFLA's website as well. So stay tuned. Um, at this point, let me please highlight that um, it's like a disclaimer, I would say that this data is not comprehensive, it's not a definitive set of data um, and priorities, but it's more of a discussion starter. So I'll spend the next few minutes to give you an idea of these results um, from the Regional Advocacy Priorities Study that we distributed this uh, summer, as Stephen mentioned. Uh, before doing this, I'd like to share with you a few important links, and my colleague Stephen will help sharing those in the chat. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for doing that. Um, so the first one is a main publication uh, of the results. It's a, it's, a, it's a big document around 75 pages long which includes a lot of charts and explanation texts for chart. Um, and here today I will be just highlighting a few of those. Um, so a few things that are drawn from this report and it's also a way to make you familiar with it. Do you want me to keep any notes or make any screenshots as um, all these that I'm showing to you today are included in this report. Um, and the other two links are also important. There are some analysis, of, uh, two analysis we, we did for with a focus on uh, policy focus and advocacy activities. So let's start with a few data first in terms of the survey engagement across the regions. So these are the acronyms I promised you earlier. <laughs> um, so AO for Asia Oceania, EU for Europe, LAC, Latin America and the Caribbean. MENA, Middle East and North Africa, NA, North America, and SSA, Sub-Saharan Africa. So overall, we received in total 384 usable answers with an identified country of origin. And these responses came from 102 countries. Um, in this pie chart, so you see the distribution uh, per region. 
So the Asia Oceania uh, came up as the first one, like with 92 responses. And then we have Europe and LAC uh, regions follow with uh, 78 respondents, North America with uh, 55, and then MENA with 45. While the survey was answered by 33 respondents uh, in the SSA region. There is also a map uh, where you see where we received responses from. Um, so congratulations to whoever uh, contributed to this uh, result. And I'd like to invite you to take a look into the detailed report so as to see a, a, a full list of countries and responses, which looks like that. Of course, more countries are there to follow. Uh, this is an indicator because uh, you know some countries are missing from this report or they have very, very low responses. So, Please have a look and uh, make the best you can to, you know, to to get more countries into it. Was saying. So in the survey, we asked uh, respondents uh, to set out uh, in the beginning whether they were answering on behalf of a library association or a library institution, or uh, whether they were answering as an individual. In case they were answering of, on behalf of a library association or institution, we also asked them to identify if. Uh, their association or institution is a small one, medium or large one. So this allowed us to get an idea of um, differences, not only between regions, but also between associations and institutions and between larger, medium and smaller players. So here you see the distribution of answers in terms of the type of uh, the respondents. Most of them came from individuals and, and library institutions. And here you see the same picture, uh, but per region, uh, which is interesting because we see that actually we had more associations than institutions answering the, the survey in EU and LAC regions, while in the other regions we had more institutions than associations. Of course, um, consensus we have uh, from every region, um, mostly individuals answered, as we said earlier. Let's go to the gist now. In terms of substance, we asked three basic questions uh, around these topics. Level of focus on financial support for different library types, levels of focus on different library policy issues, and levels of engagement in different library advocacy activities. I'm going to show you a few results per question now. So that is the first question as exactly uh, was posted. So which of the following do you see as thematic priorities for advocacy in your country? That was a multiple choice question and respondents were asked to ascribe um, a level of priority to each of those answers, ensuring stronger financial support for public, national, school, academic or research or other types of libraries. And here you see the first result is a global view of this result. And you see that in the Y, the vertical axis, one means not at all priority and five means essential. You see this also at the left bottom corner of this um, chart. Uh, so the results could indicate also areas where there may be uh, scope for regional divisions to partner with IFLA sections, uh, representing specific library types. Um, so um, we can see that public libraries are number one priority in all regions, except for SSA, the Sub-Saharan Africa region, where school libraries are number one. National libraries come close behind as a priority in AO, MENA, LAC, and SSA. And academic libraries scored highest in relative terms in Asia, Oceania, and Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, this is the national level analysis we did for the region of North America, drawing on the fact that we had sufficient responses from both countries to carry out analysis. So this gives us an insight into differences between Canadian and American respondents, and also in comparison to the original view, the one that came from the North American responses as a whole. So public libraries are considered as a top priority for both Canadian and American respondents. With the only difference here that American respondents consider academic and research libraries equally important as well, while Canadian ones have scored academic and research libraries as their third priority, alongside national libraries. Interestingly, we also see that there is a consensus for school libraries as the second most important library type. So this is the view of responses from associations globally. So associations of all sizes in all regions count public libraries as the top priority. 
School libraries are considered as very important for associations of all types as well, taking the second place. However, we see that there is a disagreement uh, on the third thematic priority, as small associations around the world consider national libraries uh, as their third priority, uh, and big associations consider school libraries and academic and research libraries as their third most important priority. Here we see the responses from association respondents to the first question only in the LAC region. Uh, just to say that we see here two bars per, per theme, um, because we had no responses from medium associations in the LAC region. Therefore, here we see the, the answers from only small and big associations in, in, in LAC. So big associations consider that only that, um, excuse me, other library types need advocacy efforts to ensure financial support. This is very important for them, it seems. In contrast to the small library associations in the LAC region that consider public and school libraries as the top priorities. Another interesting finding from this chart is that big associations consider national libraries as the library type that needs least advocacy effort to ensure financial support. And it looks like that uh, black big library associations want to change the narrative and ensure financial support for library types, something that has not been done probably till now, uh, as in most countries, national libraries get most of the country's financial support, as we, as we know. Let's have a look on an institutional, um, on the answers from an institutional point of view, only in North America. So these uh, here show uh, quite a variety of results with large institutions more likely than medium or small ones to worry about other library types, um, academic and research libraries and school libraries, and small institutions in North America primarily focus on a national libraries, and medium institutions in North America seem to focus mostly on public libraries. Let's now go to the second question, which has been, which of the following issues do you see as thematic priorities for advocacy in your country, other than financial support? So this was again, a multiple choice question. We gave them uh, the response, uh, the respondent specific uh, themes. Um, and actually this question aimed to look beyond pure questions around money um, and, think rather about the wider scape of government actions that involve and uh, or affect libraries. So here is the global view of the answers. You see underneath the themes we gave them. So digital inclusion and connectivity uh, seem to be the biggest priorities for three regions, North America, Asia, Oceania, and Europe. Very interesting finding. Uh, also library laws are first and first and foremost in the MENA region and in the LAC region, but they seem to be a low priority in North America, for example. Also, literacy and reading are the top priorities in Sub-Saharan Africa and score relatively highly um, elsewhere too. These it indicate potential priority areas for actions in individual regions, uh, also in collaboration with uh, any IFA section that is doing work on these areas. So for example, copyright and open access matters are of high priority in all of North America, MENA and Europe regions. And some issues such as heritage culture um, are consistently medium um, high priorities in all regions. Um, so this does suggest the potential at least for experience sharing between region. Here we see the national level analysis we did for the region of North America for the second question. Um, we see consensus on the theme of digital inclusion and connectivity, in which is considered as a top priority for both countries and so also for the region. Um, and also there is a consensus around the topic of copyright and open access. So these two are the biggest items for both countries and in the region. So after those two priorities, the landscape starts to vary a bit. Canadian respondents seem to consider social inclusion as their third priority, while this is the seventh priority uh, for American ones. And on the opposite, library laws also seem quite highly important for American respondents, but this has not scored so high for Canadian ones. So this is like kind of a mirror, uh, it's like totally different. So this is the, the answers from associations 
globally. So the results here show the different policy areas uh, on which associations focus their advocacy, other than planting, as we said. So while big library associations in all regions count copyright and open access as their biggest priority, the issue, this issue stands out less among small and medium library associations. The same happens with library laws, uh, which are considered of major importance for small associations, but only come in the middle of the pack for medium and big associations. Um, other matters such as uh, legal deposits um, generally receive less focus, but this may be because also of the relatively narrow nature of this, uh, this area. And here we see the, the association respondents' answers to the second question in the LAC region only. Um, also to mention again, that we see the two bars because we had no response from medium associations. So what we see here, we see that library laws, library staff matters, copyright and open access, heritage and culture are considered of high importance by both small and big library associations in Latin America and the Caribbean. On the other hand, there is a disagreement between small and big library associations regarding the legal deposit. Um, so big library associations uh, think this is a matter of a major importance, equally with other matters, uh, but small associations consider this topic as a low priority for the libraries in the region. Let's now see the, the, the results from an institutional point of view globally. So we see that there is a general consensus among institutions of all sizes around the world, according to which uh, small, medium and big libraries institutions, excuse me, consider digital inclusion, connectivity and corporate and open access as top priorities. This is also uh, the same result as for associations and this is very interesting. And here we see the institutional point of view only in North America. Uh, so what we see here is that copyright and open access seem to be by far the biggest priority for small institutions in North America. Um, and then we have for small institutions, digital inclusion, connectivity and social inclusion to be coming next. Um, the landscape looks slightly different for large institutions in North America with digital inclusion connectivity as a top priority and copyright, open access and heritage and culture coming up as next ones. And for medium institutions, we have copyright and open access and digital inclusion connectivity as joint top priorities. So let's now go to the last third and last question. Um, we asked them respondents about their current advocacy um, activities that are currently carried out around the world. Um, so we asked, what sort of advocacy activities are you carrying out in your association institution or more broadly, um, if they are we're answering as an individual in, in your national library field? Um, so here you see that in the Y axis now, the vertical one, we have one meaning uh, not at all active and five meaning very active. Actually, what is interesting here to look now is at lower scores as areas where more work might be needed. Uh, potentially also to be supported by our new regional division committees. So what we see here is that more contact with legislators and scheduling more meetings with government officials to talk about libraries could be seen, um, could be seen as needed in all regions, as we see that these are low um, everywhere, and particularly in Asia, Oceania and LAC. In Europe, we see the same uh, issue, but additionally, we see that more work might be needed in evaluating the uh, impact of advocacy work. Um, in SSA and MENA regions, we see that the scores for actions like meeting regularly with government officials, making contacts with legislators, and evaluating the impact work of libraries are similarly low. And additionally, in the MENA region, more work might be needed in designating individuals focused on advocacy, while respondents in North America seem to be really active in this field. So there might be a knowledge exchange opportunity in here between regions. So looking around the world, we can see a strong emphasis on lobbying type activities in Europe and North America, uh, more on communication type of activities in LAC, MENA and SSA, and the mixture of those two in the Asia and Oceania region. 
this is the national level analysis we did for uh, North American uh, for the third question. So let's again here have a look at the lower scores. We see that there is quite a variety in the results between the two countries and their respondents. So meeting regularly with government officials is the lowest score for American respondents, but not so low for Canadian ones. So there could be a learning opportunity here between those two countries. However, both Canadian and American respondents have scored the theme contacts with legislators similarly low. Also advocacy impact evaluation, which is the lowest in the region, has scored low for Canadian uh, respondents, but not so low for um, American ones, although it's still quite low. And respondents from both countries seem to be very active in partnerships, something that is evident. And their know-how and lessons learned, I think we in this area could potentially be shared uh, with other regions as well. Let's now look at our uh, two last slides. This is the global view of responses from associations to the third question. Um, let's again look at the lower scores. Creating contacts with legislators seem to be uh, something on which all associations, no matter their size, uh, may need to work more. Although larger and medium associations do have a strong focus on understanding laws and getting to know officials. We see here that small library associations seem to be more active in mobilizing their members as advocates compared to medium and big library associations. Interestingly, each association type seems to be very active in a different thematic area. So small associations are very active in partnerships as well. Medium ones seem active in contact with government officials and big ones in understanding laws and policies. And let's go to our last slide. These are the association respondents' answer to the third question only in the LAC region. Um, so every thematic area seems to have its own actually unique results here. In some cases, um, small associations seem to be more active than big associations and the opposite in other areas of work. For example, big associations uh, seem to be more active in understanding laws and policies, while small ones have scored this thematic area as one of their less active ones. On the other hand, small associations in the LAC region are re relatively active in creating attractive communication tools, communicating the impact of libraries, and creating contacts with journalists, while big associations have scored this thematic area as their one of their less active. So thank you very much for your attention. And we'll move on uh, quickly to the Q&A uh, in a moment. But before that, I should add that if you're interested in engaging further in these conversations, please look at the website. Um, these, are, these are the web pages for each regional division. Um, and Stephen has put those links in the chat. Also, depending on where you live or where your work interests are, you may join any uh, open mailing list of those regional division committees to get informed about their work and to, to know uh, how you can get involved. These are also in the chat. And before opening the floor to you for questions, I wanted to hand the floor to Steven to say a few words about how we can use the results. Thank you, the Spina. So you've received a lot of information there um, uh, setting out you know, some of the comparisons, the averages you're seeing around the world some of the differences between bigger organizations, institutions, associations, and smaller ones. And I'm aware it's a lot of information in there. So please do refer to the link in the chat, which gives you the, allows you to go and see the full results of this. And, but I wanted just before, as the speaker said, we go into questions to, to encourage you to think a little bit about how to use these results, both this webinar, which of course we'll be putting up on YouTube and be making available along with the slides, but also the report in order to support you in your own reflection. Because just as this report, just as this study has been a way for us at IFLA to think about where we should be focusing, we hope it's also something that helps you to, to structure your discussions, to structure your debates around this. So we've got five ideas of, of things you could do in order to, to use the results effectively. Firstly is assessing yourself and your situation. So, Take those results, take them for your region, for your type, are you an association, institution, individual, even a small association, big association or whatever, and think, I don't know, how would you have answered those questions? How would your answers compare 
to those for the comparator group? Would you have given higher attention to some issues or less to others? Are you more active in some ways than others? And so you can use this. You can actually start to sort of reflect on your own practice and your own focus compared to others. On this basis, you can think about gaps. You can think about to what extent are there differences between where you are now and where you might want to be. You can think about, well, are we focusing enough on such and such a policy area as we should be if we want to achieve our goals? Are we focusing too much on one policy area compared to others? Um, are there areas where you realize that you'd like to be more active, types of activities that you would like to do more and that you aren't currently? And so you can start thinking about, okay, there are those gaps, those, those areas to focus on. Now, of course, what's important in this is that different policy areas, of course, do require different combinations of activities. And we talk here about a balance of activities. There'll be some policies, such as copyright, where probably actually an understanding of the law and good contacts with decision makers, so things a bit more like lobbying, are going to be more important. Whereas there are other areas, such as library funding, where arguably we really need the full combination. We need broader communications to the public, to decision makers, and personal contacts, budget decision makers, in order to make a difference. So, and as, as, as we set out in some of our blogs as well around this, advocacy is this continuum, it is this spectrum that goes from lobbying all the way to broad communications. How you do this, the combination of activities you need will vary, but this survey, this study, hopefully gives you a framework for thinking about what you're doing now, what different you might want to do. Linked to this, you can think about prioritising your development. So are there areas where you want to do more, to know more? And this is, of course, uh, to know more, to do more. I don't know, do you want to get better at, at, uh, at evaluating the impact of your advocacy? Do you want to get better at reaching out to journalists? Do you want to get better at designing great tools for communicating the impact that you're having? So this can then be a tool for thinking about well, what are your learning priorities? How can you become a more effective advocate? How can you become a more effective lobbyist, a more effective communicator, a more effective partner? And finally, of course, once you've defined those areas where you want to improve, where you think you need to improve, you can learn from others. And of course, this is one of the key functions, the key goals of our new regional structures is to provide a platform, a forum, for identifying opportunities to exchange, to learn, tools, other materials, webinars, brochures, booklets, whatever, that can help you build those skills, that can help you fit, bridge those gaps where you think there are gaps to be bridged. And of course, not just within your region, but also globally. So this is going to be something that I know is going to be an important part of the actions of our new regional structures in due course. So, with that, I think we've come to the end of our presentation. So I wanted to open the floor for questions and answers, if you have any. Um, you have our emails up here. Please do send emails to ask about to, to, to ask any questions you have. Um, and uh, you could have after the event. But in the meanwhile, please do use the chat or use the questions and answers button in order to actually ask any questions you have. I'll give you a few seconds to think about what questions you might want to ask. Otherwise, I will have a question for this Vina, but. Okay, so just to give you some time while you think about any questions that you would have, and um, I'd like to ask you this Vina, how, how has this work already informed the preparation of regional division committee action plans, these action plans for our new regional structures within IFLA? Um, yeah, so um, as you mentioned, actually, we, we distributed this, uh, this survey and, and during the summer, and then, and then we, we gathered the results and created this study. And as you, as you might, as our participants here attendees might know, um, the new regional division committees started just after the first ever virtual WLAC. So um, we wanted to give them um, something to have in their hands while they were starting their work. Um, and so therefore we prepared, we, we prepared for them for each regional division committee, a, a region custom 
uh, reports uh, based on the results from this uh, survey and study. And as we said in the beginning, this is not a definitive set of priorities rather than a starter for discussions. So, and we saw that really happening because we presented the original results uh, in each of the regional division committee meetings. And then this was really an argument for them to say, for example, okay, we would really like to focus on copyright. We would really like to do an action for um, uh, lifelong learning and, and stuff like that. So their action plans will be soon published on the website. We cannot say no um, anymore at this point, but you, you I mean, uh, the action plans really re reflect some of the, of the things that have been, uh, have, we have drawn from this report. Um, yeah, so. Excellent, thank you. Let's give a, another couple of seconds in case there are any further questions. Otherwise, perhaps the spina, do you have a question? Actually, all? yeah, I was thinking, um, um, this is also something we discussed in the, um, we have already discussed, but it's always interesting to, to move this discussion forward and to ask you, what do you, what do you think are the most interesting findings from this report? Because this is a really big study. As I said, it's like almost 80, it's 75 pages long, uh, but there are really some, some diamonds there uh, for, for every region, of course, but also globally. And because you have great experience on advocacy and you know, you're, you're, with your, your mind can, can do synthesis. Um, so what, what, are, what is your opinion on, on what, is the, the, what are the, really the highlights of this study? Thank you. So I, I think there's, there's, there's two or three that I'd like to highlight here. I think, first of all, what I found fascinating was the difference between different regions in terms of focus of advocacy. And I suspect this is something that we, we probably should have known already, but it was fascinating to see it, it reflected in the results in such a clear way that you have, like effectively you can think about sort of the different regions according in particular to the number of often richer countries that they have within them. And so it was fascinating that the, the regions with larger shares of, of richer countries in them tended mm -hmm. to see issues around digital inclusion as being really key. And I think that makes sense because um, these are societies where increasingly if you're not online, you're completely excluded. You can't interact with government. You can't do a job in many cases. You can't interact with other people because non-digital means are sort of, uh, in some cases, they're dying out. There are so many newspapers today that used to be in print, but now they're only digital. And so if you don't have access to the internet, you don't have access to the news. Um, and so it was fascinating that in those regions, it was this focus on digital, that this was really the, the key thing that we needed to look at. Whereas then in some of the, the, the regions which are often middle income, so Latin America and the Caribbean and Middle, uh, middle East and North Africa, there was a stronger focus on library laws. And so reflecting that libraries themselves needed to, 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 to sort them to be able to guarantee that they'll be able to continue to exist, that they receive adequate support to actually go out and help communities to actually provide that sort of core infrastructure that may still be lacking. And then in Sub-Saharan Africa, which sadly does contain many countries that have relatively low literacy rates in general, that libraries saw therefore literacy and reading as being the number one priority among policymakers. I think you know, across the board, it, it shows that, that, that libraries are aware of the areas that sort of, that, that really matter. They're aware of the areas that sort of matter for society and they're looking to respond to them. So I thought that, that was interesting. I think a second interesting area was especially contrasting between bigger and smaller associations and the fact that often we can assume, maybe correctly, maybe incorrectly, that if we're talking about generalist associations, the bigger ones are the ones that are more likely to have internal capacity to deal with more technical issues, to, to get involved with discussions around copyright, around legal deposit, around issues like this. And, and so we did see in general that the, the bigger associations tended to be engaged around more technical issues, where smaller ones tended to be involved around more general issues, such as library laws, and they're really sort of key foundational 
stuff for libraries that you know, really the laws that set out and there should there be libraries should they be funded and so on but it was interesting to get that that see that difference between the focus on the specific and more technical areas and the more general I think that the final one I was going to point out quickly was that and that I thought was actually really welcome was that across the board there was such a strong focus on, on partnerships and it's a point that we try to make that, that libraries are such obvious partners for so many other stakeholders so anyone who cares about education anyone who cares about digital inclusion anyone who can bear, can, cares about democratic engagement and democratic participation all of these organizations they have a natural ally in libraries they benefit from the work that libraries carry out and so it was really welcome to see that in so many cases it did look like library associations were working with these partners we're making sure to mobilize them to make sure that they're also advocating for libraries and hopefully to be more effective. So the fact that that was there across the board, across the region was extremely welcome to see. That's really such a great summary of the highlights. Um, I also wanted to mention the, the difference between small library associations and big library associations that the small ones seem to focus more on, or to, I don't know, to do this, at least to be more active and in and, and focusing on their members as advocates. While the big library associations didn't, I mean, appear at least in this survey to not be so active in this area. So that was also something we have discussed and it's really interesting to share also with our attendees here that probably in sometimes uh, big library associations because they have maybe teams that are focused on advocacy, um, Maybe they need more effort in, in you know, in making their their members uh, feel the co-ownership of, of their work, and uh, and 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 be there and make them their their advocates. So and um, that was something that is, was really outstanding from this report. I, and I I, th I think you're absolutely right on that. Our, our argument, of course, is that just as advocacy is a spectrum, going from public communications to very focused lobbying. Um, so to we need both it's good to have both the named people both people who are dedicated to building those relationships going in to see the politicians um, and doing so on a continuous basis so you can build that relationship but also you do need mobilization the impact stories come from people on the ground the engagement at the grassroots level comes from people on the ground so I know effective advocacy in so many areas depends on, on having both, both dedicated staff and being able to mobilize members. It certainly shouldn't be a case of one or the other. So it was interesting, perhaps, that exactly as you said in your presentation, this being a, are there lessons that smaller associations can offer about how do you support volunteers? How do you help them see the interest in mobilizing, develop their skills? At the same time, how can you then develop a, an advocacy capacity, a, a focus on advocacy skills in smaller associations, so that if they do want to go and hold relay, hold discussions, hold conversations, they can. They have a, a, a regular group, a constant group of people who can build those constant relations, build those lasting relationships. Okay. So can't see any questions in the Q and A box or in the chat. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think in any case, as we said earlier, we're conscious that there's a lot of data in this yeah. report, and so very much encourage you to go and look at it. Um, we've posted our email addresses on the slide. Um, what we will do is post this recording online alongside the slide, so you can take another look yourself. You can hopefully use them in the ways that we set out in order to self-assess, to identify gaps to think about um, what range of activities you need to fulfill your goals, what are your learning needs, and then how to fulfill them. So please look out um, on IFLA's social media, on IFLA's YouTube channel. We'll place all this information up there and we, of course, welcome any questions, any uh, questions, comments that you have. And as earlier, please do consider joining the open mailing lists for our new regional division committee, for our new regional divisions in order to hear more about what we're doing and what they're doing in particular to actually address some of these issues on the ground. But so with that, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Despina, for your presentation. Thank you to all of you for, for, to, for, for, for being here today, for participating. And we look forward to continuing to work with you in future. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Bye.